today's class by given by hargus sut sagari mathe ji please explain how mar obisensis mathe ji uh today we are reading sri chaitanya charitamrita ante lila 5 chapter verse number 11 onwards mathe ji please take over the call mathe ji um sorry mathe ji i just stepped uh, uh, away a little bit sorry about that Oh. Yeah. Live also did not start, Mataji. It's okay. I'm at the G. Just a, we can take another minute. It's not yet ten. So. Oh, okay. So that message was for me because I just came by the side. You know, I I just stepped out to the other room. So. Okay, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Today's class is given by. Hari Krishna, uh, Suksagari Mataji. Uh, today we are reading Chaitanya Charitra Amrita Antalila, Chapter Five, Verse uh, Number Eleven onwards. Mataji, please take over the call, Mataji. Thank you so much, Mataji. Um, first, firstly, I wish to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. to purify myself and also uh, you know study uh, chaitanya charitamrita antya leela which is actually beyond me especially today's subject matter i am not sure uh, if i can do any justice to it but uh, with the help of all your mercy i'm thinking i should just speak a few words glorifying uh, uh, chaitanya charitamrita and uh, uh, i really thank everybody from the bottom of my heart uh, and i pray to my guru maharaj to give me the um, intelligence and the words to speak the right uh, uh, right words um i'll start with the invocation prayer, prayers first om agyanati mirandhasya gyananjana shalakhaya चक्षुर्मीत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं कदाह्यम ददाती स्वदाक नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते गिरीराजस्वामी नामिने नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाशात्या देशतारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे टुडे विल बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैप्टर फाइव वर्स इलेवन ऑनवर्ड्स um um i may be covering up to 40 or 45 verses so i humbly request if uh, mata ji can help me read i'll read about a couple of verses and if anybody else wants to volunteer and read i would very much um, uh, appreciate that thank you so much so reading from chaitanya charitamrita antya leela uh, chapter 5 verse 11 तबे प्रद्युम्न मिश्र गेलांदेर स्थाने रायर सेवक प्रद्युम्न मिश्र बीइंग दस अडवाइस्ड बाय श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु वेन टू द होम ऑफ रामानंद राय देर द सर्वेंट ऑफ रामानंद राय गेव हिम अ प्रॉपर प्लेस टू सिट डाउन फाइव ट्वेल्व दर्शन न पाना मिश्र सेवक पुशीला रायर वृत्तांत सेवक कहते लगीला अनेबल टू सी रामानंद राय इमीडिएटली 
Pradyumna Mishra inquired from the servant, who then described what Sri Ramanadaraya was doing. 513. There are two, girl, two dancing girls who are extremely beautiful. They are very youthful and they're expert in dancing and singing. 514. Sri Ramananda Raya has taken these two girls to a solitary place in his garden where he is teaching and directing them to dance according to the songs he has composed for his drama. The drama being rehearsed by Ramananda Raya and the two girls was a well-known Jagannatha Vallabha Nataka. The songs and dances were meant for the pleasure of Lord Jagannatha. Therefore, Ramananda Raya was personally giving instructions on how to sing and dance for the drama. 515. Please sit here and wait for a few moments. As soon as he comes, he will execute whatever order you give him. 516. When Pradyumna Mishra remained seated there, Ramananda Raya took the two girls to a solitary place. 517. Svahaste Karana Snana Gatra Samarjana. Translation. With his own hand, Sri Ramananda Raya massaged their bodies with oil and bathed them with water. Indeed, Ramananda Raya cleansed their entire bodies with his own hand. 5.18 Svahaste parana vastra sarvanga mandana tabu nirvikara raya ramanande ramana Although he dressed the two young girls and decorated their bodies with his own hand, he remained, un he remained unchanged. Such is the mind of Srila Ramananda Raya. Kashtha Pashana Sparshehaya Yaiche Bhava Taruni Sparshe Ramanandera Taiche Swabhava. While touching the young girls, he was like a person touching wood or stone, for his body and mind were unaffected. 520. Savia Buddhi Arupiya Karena Sevana. Svabhavika dasi bhava karena aropana. Srila Ramananda Raya used to act in that way because he thought of himself in his original position as a maid servant of the gopis. Thus, although externally he appeared to be a man, internally in his original spiritual position, he considered himself a maid servant and considered the two girls gopis. Purport. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakura writes in his Amrita Pravaha Bhashya, Srila Ramananda Raya composed a drama named Jagannath Vallabha Nataka. And he engaged two young girls who were professional dancers and singers to demonstrate the ideology of the drama. Such girls who are called Devadasis are still employed in the temple of Jagannatha, where they are called Ma Maharis. Sri Ram Ramananda Raya engaged two such girls and because they were meant to play the parts of gopis, he taught them how to awaken thoughts like those of the gopis. Because the gopis are worshipable personalities, Ramananda Raya, who considered the two girls gopis and himself their maid servant, engaged in their service by massaging their bodies with oil to cleanse them completely. Because Ramananda Raya always placed himself in the position of a maid servant of the gopis, his rehearsal with the girls was actually on the spiritual platform. Because there was no question of personal sense gratification, when Sri Ramananda Raya was serving the girls, his mind was steady and his body untransformed. This is not to be imitated, nor is such a mentality possible for anyone but Sri Ramananda Raya. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will explain, the example of Sri Ramananda Raya is certainly unique. The author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita has given this description because in perfect devotional service, one can attain such a position. Nevertheless, 
one must understand the subject very seriously and never attempt to imitate such activities. Uh, dear Matajis, anybody would want to go from 521? It's okay to skip the Bengali if, if, it's, if you're not comfortable. Okay. The greatness of the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is exceedingly difficult to understand. Sri Ramananda Rai is unique among them all, for he showed how one can extend his ecstatic love to the extreme limit. Ramananda Rai directed the two girls how to dance and express the deep meaning of his songs through dramatic performances. He taught them how to express the symptoms of continuous natural and transitional ecstasies with the movements of their faces, their eyes, and the other parts of their bodies. Through the feminine poses and dances they were taught by Ramananda Rai, the two girls precisely exhibited all these expressions of ecstasy before Lord Jagannath. Then Ramananda Rai fed the two girls sumptuous prasadam and sent them into, to their homes unexposed. Every day he trained the two Devadasis how to dance, who among the small living entities, their minds always absorbed in material sense gratification, could understand the mentality of Sri Ramananda Rai. When the servant informed Ramananda Rai of Pradyumna Mishra's arrival, Ramananda Rai immediately went to the assembly room. He offered his obeisances to Pradyumna Mishra with all respect and then with great humility spoke as follows. Sir, you came here long ago, but no one informed me. Therefore, I have certainly become an offender at your lotus feet. My entire home has been purified by your arrival. Kindly order me. What can I do for you? I'm your servant. Pradyumna Mishra replied, I came simply to see you. Now I have purified myself by seeing your honor. Because Pradyumna Mishra saw that it was late, he did not say anything else to Ramananda Rai. Instead, he took leave of him and returned to his own home. The next day, when Pradyumna Mishra arrived in the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord inquired, have you heard talks about Krishna from Ramananda Rai? Pradyumna Mishra thereupon described the activities of Sri Ramananda Rai. After hearing about these activities, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to speak. I am a sannyasi, he said, and certainly I consider myself renounced. But what to speak of seeing a woman? Even if, if I even hear the name of a woman, I feel changes in my mind and body. Therefore, who could remain unmoved by the sight of a woman? It is very difficult. Everyone, please hear these topics about Sri Ramananda Rai, although they are so wonderful and uncommon that they should not be spoken. The two professional dancing girls are beautiful and youthful, yet Sri Ramananda Rai personally massages their entire bodies with oil. He personally bathes and dresses them and decorates them with ornaments. In this way, he naturally sees and touches the private parts of their body. Nevertheless, the mind of Sri Ramananda Rai never changes, although he teaches the girls how to physically express all the transformations of ecstasy. I can I finish this entire conversation, Mataji? Yeah, we can go on until like 52 or something, oh. if it's okay with you. His mind is as steady as wood or stone. Indeed, it is wonderful that even when he touches such young girls, his mind never changes. The authority for such acts is the prerogative of Ramananda Rai alone, for I can understand that his body is not material, but has been completely transformed into a spiritual entity. He alone and no one else can understand the position of his mind. But I can make a guess in terms of directions from the Shastra. The Vedic scripture Srimad Bhagavatam gives the direct evidence in this matter. When one hears or describes with great faith the pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna, such as his rasa dance with the gopis, the disease of lusty desires in the heart, and the agitation caused by the three modes of material nature are immediately nullified, and he becomes sober and silent. Tasting transcendental, effulgent, sweetly ecstatic love of Krishna, such a person can enjoy life 24 hours a day in the transcendental bliss of the sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. A transcendentally sober person who with faith and love continually hears from a realized soul about the activities of Lord Sri Krishna and his rasa dance with the gopis, or one who describes such activities can attain full transcendental devotional service at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, 
lusty material desires which are the heart disease of all materialistic persons are for him quickly and completely vanquished if a transcendentally situated person following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami hears and speaks about the Rasalila dance of Krishna and is always absorbed in the thoughts of Krishna while serving the Lord day and night within his mind, what shall I say about the result? It is so spiritually exalted that it cannot be expressed in words. Such a person is an eternally liberated associate of the Lord and his body is completely spiritualized. Although he is visible to material eyes, he is spiritually situated and all his activities are spiritual. By the will of Krishna, such a devotee is understood to possess a spiritual body. Srila Ramananda Rai is situated on the path of spontaneous love of Godhead. Therefore, he is in a spiritual body and his mind is not materially affected. I also hear topics about Krishna from Ramananda Rai. If you want to hear such topics, go to him again. You can mention my name before him saying, he has sent me to hear about Lord Krishna from you. Go hastily while he is in the assembly room. Hearing this, Pradyumna Mishra immediately departed. Pradyumna Mishra went to Ramananda Rai who offered him respectful obeisances and said, please order me for what purpose have you come? Pradyumna Mishra answered, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has sent me to hear topics about Lord Krishna from you. Hearing this, Ramananda Rai became absorbed in ecstatic love and began to speak with great transcendental mm -hmm. pleasure. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Preeti Mataji. I think that will be a good place to stop, right? I think Prabhu yes. can continue from tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like we see, and uh, uh, this is a very advanced topic, and uh, I just wanted to... Uh, um, you know, bring out a couple of, uh, you know, a two line purport to verse number 26 before we even delve into it, um, in which Srila Prabhupada says, Ramananda Raya's service to the gopis for the satisfaction of Krishna is purely an affair of the spiritual world. Unless one is fully situated in the spiritual atmosphere, the activities of Ramananda Raya are most difficult to understand. So uh, from this, what I personally understand is, uh, I mean, leave alone being situated in the spiritual atmosphere. Uh, I mean, I'm far, far, far below that. So I'm not sure how to comprehend these topics. So um, I thought it would be good to uh, understand how great a personality Srila Ramananda Rai is and um, how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually regarded him as one of his most confidential associates. So uh, moving on in that uh, light, uh, I'd like to speak a few words about the greatness of Srila Ramananda Raya. Actually, Ramananda Raya is considered one of the most confidential uh, associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like we know, three and a half um, confidential associates are there. Uh, one is uh, Sri Swarup Dhammadar, um, the other is Shiki Mahiti and the third is uh, Sri Ramananda Raya and the, the half associate is uh, Shiki Mahiti's sister. So they, these three and a half associates are actually very, very confidential associates of uh, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, in their association actually uh, by the uh, mercy and by the empowerment uh, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were able to actually discuss or they were able to recite uh, the uh, very uh, esoteric pastimes of uh, uh, Sri Sri Radha Madhava Sri Sri Krishna and Radha in uh, you know in their conjugal rasa. So Ramananda Rai actually is a uh, he represents or he is an epitome of how to understand this Madhurya rasa or the highest prema. Uh, you know, which is actually uh, the end aim or the end goal for many Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So, uh, so he is empowered uh, specifically by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the Madhya Leela, uh, it is said in the chapter 8, I think, uh, it is described that uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like the ocean and uh, Srila Ramananda Raya is like the cloud who actually 
uh, takes or absorbs this water, like how the clouds are formed because of evaporation of the water from the ocean and then they get their water from the ocean. So similarly, Sri Ramananda Raya, he is the cloud uh, who is filled with this nectar of rasa and he pours back this uh, uh, rasa or, you know, he, he, he discusses this very intimate topics um, you know, and it falls back into the ocean, who is, which is none other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he takes it from the ocean itself. The water is evaporated and the cloud is formed. And then, you know, when it rains, it goes back to the ocean and gives it back to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's purely by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Ramananda Raya can speak or even, uh, you know, contemplate on such advanced uh, topics. So like we understand from these purports, and there is a very nice uh, purport uh, in the later verses too, uh, which uh, gives us the help of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, to understand, uh, you know, how we can understand these kind of very confidential pastimes of the Lord. Um, if, yeah, I will read that purport too, because it's nice to read Prabhupada's purports always. Um, this is, the purport to verses 45 and 46. Uh, the translation is this, when one hears or describes with great, great faith the pastimes of Lord Krishna, such as his rasa dance with the gopis, the disease of lusty desires in his heart, and the agitation caused by the three modes of material nature are immediately nullified, and he becomes sober and silent. Purport, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura comments in this connection. Any person seriously inclined to hear about the pastimes of Krishna's rasa dance, as mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, with great faith and a transcendental, spiritual, spiritually inspired mind, is immediately freed from the natural lusty desires found within the heart of a materialistic man. When a pure Vaishnava speaks on Srimad Bhagavatam and another pure Vaishnava hears Srimad Bhagavatam from such a realized soul, both of them live in the transcendental world where the contamination of the modes of material nature cannot touch them. Free from the contamination of the modes of nature, the speaker and hearer are fixed in a transcendental mentality, knowing that their position on the transcendental platform is to serve the Supreme Lord. The class of men known as Prakrita Sahajiyas, who consider the transcendental pastimes of Lord Krishna, something like the behavior between a man and a woman in the material field, artificially think that hearing the Rasalila will help them by diminishing the lusty desires of their deceased hearts. But because they do not follow the regulative principles, but instead violate even ordinary morals, their contemplation of Rasalila is a futile attempt, which sometimes results in their imitating the dealings of the gopis and Lord Krishna. To forbid such habits of the Prakrita Sahajiyas, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has excluded their material intelligence by using the word Vishwasa, faith. In Sriman Bhagavatam 10.33.30, Srila Sukadeva Goswami says, Naita Samachare Jatu Manasapihi Manishwaraha Vinashyanti Acharan Maudhyad Yatha Rudro Dijam Visham Certainly one who is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead should never, even within his mind, imitate the activities of the transcendental Rasa Leela of Krishna. If out of ignorance one does so, he will be destroyed, just as if he were to imitate Lord Shiva who drank poison produced from the ocean. Again, uh, Srila Prabhupada reiterates this point that these topics are uh, you know, beyond uh, most of, you know, practicing sadhakas unless you know somebody goes to a level of bhava or beyond that where they can at least get a glimpse of what's happening so um, so the false conception that that you know um, uh, thinking that i am elevated or i am advanced and i can read and understand this will only make me a prakrita sahajya so um, so you know it's better not to you know go that path uh, so let's discuss about Sri uh, Ramananda Raya. Ramananda Raya's father's uh, name was Bhavananda Raya. And uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually mentions that uh, he is none other than Pandu, the father of the five Pandavas. 
So Ramananda Raya's uh, uh, spiritual identity, there are many identities who are actually, you know, man, many personalities who are linked with Ramananda Raya. And it is said that he is partly Arjun and partly Arjunia. Uh, Arjunia was a gopi who was none other than Arjun. And uh, then also some people say he was Lalita Sakhi and some say Vishakha Sakhi like that. So Ramananda Bra uh, Raya, like the five Pandavas, he had four other brothers and uh, they were born and uh, they appeared in, uh, in Odisha, like his father was there. And uh, um, they were not born into very high class Brahmana families as such, but they were born into Kayas and uh, the particular sect of this Kayas community, you know, though they are mercantile, they were regarded as Shudras. But still he was in charge of, you know, a lot of uh, government affairs, you know, um, uh, in, uh, you know, by the banks of Godavari, that's where he was living. And uh, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set out for the South Indian uh, Yatra, that time uh, Sarvabhoma uh, Bhattacharya, he specifically mentioned to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he should meet with Srila Ramananda Raya and told that externally though, you know, in fact, if you see the pictures of Ramananda Raya, he is sporting a mushtak and hair like that, you know, like not a clean shaven like that. So, uh, so he said that externally though, he appears, you know, to be a mercantile class, you know, like a Shudra basically, but uh, he is so advanced, uh, you know, in his, uh, uh, sadhana in his uh, bhakti that uh, he told uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he should make it a point to meet uh, Ramananda Rai when he goes on his South Indian Yatra. So when uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, you know, he, when he comes on this Yatra and by the banks of Godavari, he sees uh, Ramananda Rai there actually. So then, um, but he does not call him or talk to him. And Ramananda Raya then sees who is this effulgent sannyasi here. So he goes up to him and offers uh, obeisances. And then uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asks him to identify himself. He says, who are you? So then uh, Ramananda Raya uh, takes a very humble position and says he's a wretched soul. I mean, he's a wretched Shudra who is not worthy of any respect like that, though he was holding a high position and uh, 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 but still he, you know, uh, uh, he introduces himself like that. So then uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraces Sri Ramananda Rai and immediately they go into this ecstasy because they are not ordinary people embracing. This is the Lord and his very confidential associate embracing here. So, you know, like they go in, they both experience, uh, you know, symptoms of ecstasy, but then, you know, they're aware that what would people around them think, you know? So um, that's why they try to control themselves. And then uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, let's discuss about Krishna. And uh, why don't we meet here at the same place in the evening? So then Sri Ramananda Rai, he gets ready. And you know, in the evening he waits for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come and uh, you know, uh, talk to him, like to discuss more of Krishna Katha. So that's, that's the time when uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually, you know, has this uh, great conversation, the very famous uh, Raya Ramananda Samvad, uh, which takes place between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Ramananda Rai, in which he asks, what is the highest goal or what is the highest perfection of life? And uh, Sri Ramananda Rai, he starts off with explaining, you know, first he gives uh, Varnashrama. He says that to follow Varnashrama Dharma is the perfection. So then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, he keeps saying, Ehi Bahya, Ehi Bahya. That means this is still external. It is not on a spiritual level. It's still on a material context. So then uh, uh, Ramananda Raya, you know, goes one step more and then he says that, offering the fruits of one's own activities, you know, uh, like karma, phala uh, tyaga, he says that is even higher. So then again, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, ehi bahya, ehi bahya, it's still external. No, that's not the answer. So then uh, Ramananda Raya goes one step further and talks about nishkama karma, you know, where 
you're not even attached to the activity itself. You know, Sarva Dharman Paritya, that's the verse quoted there. Sarva Dharman Paritya, Mami Kam Sharanam Raja, Ham Tam Sarva Papiru Moksha Shamashucha. So in that, uh, Ramananda then quotes uh, this verse and says that one has to give up even these um, Varnashrama duties or any karma or any fruitive activities because a learned person uh, recognizes that even these activities which one may perform as their occupational duties, you know, Sarva Dharma, Dharma means occupational duties. So even though one may perform them as their occupational duties, still they do have tinges of karma here and there, you know, some fruitive uh, results here and there. So one should give them up and may totally surrender to Krishna. So that's what Ramananda Raya says. So then not only surrendering the fruits of the activities, but the activities itself, one should give up these kind of activities and situate themselves on a higher plane. So when he says this, again, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, I'm not satisfied. Again, he says it's still external. You know, it is, uh, one Maharaj explains that it is like um, making a business deal with Krishna in one sense, because uh, you're saying that Krishna, I give up all my duties, my occupations, everything, and now you give me protection. So it is not still evoking that real prema or the real relationship which you want to establish with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he says that's still on a very external plane. It's, it's, it's not, you know, convincing enough. So then again, Ramananda Rai goes, uh, you know, this is actually also described as Karma Mishra Bhakti. And then he goes on to say, talk about, you know, when one seizes these kind of activities and uh, situates himself in transcendental knowledge. So he says, he talks about Jnana Mishra Bhakti next. And then, um, uh, <clears throat> but then again, you know, when the Bhakti is tinged with Jnana, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not convinced. He's like, you know, uh, when there is some tinge of jnana in the bhakti, it could always give rise to some speculation and some mayavad tendency. So this is again not pure bhakti. So again, he says this is still bahya. It is not pure devotion service. So go on, go on. So he keeps prodding uh, Sri Ramananda Rai like that. So next, uh, you know, Sri Ramananda Rai, after this, he talks about pure devotion service, like, you know, pure bhakti. So, you know, which is uh, totally untinged uh, by any karma or jnana. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, yes, you're right, but then there are more stages to it. So at this time, he stops saying bahya, because now, you know, bhakti is, uh, you know, it's not uh, like what it's not affected by jnana or karma or, you know, any other practices, bhakti is uh, independent. So then, uh, he goes on later on to describe the various rasas in bhakti, you know, like the Shanta rasa, the Sakya, the Vasanya, uh, all these rasas, Madhurya rasa. And uh, so he goes on to describe, and then later on he comes to this, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, topmost love of the gopis, and then he describes how Srimati Radharani is the topmost, you know, in her. Uh, expression of Mahabhava and uh, so on. Like, and then he establishes how the uh, love of the gopis is the topmost and Srimati Radharani is the topmost devotee. And that is the, the ultimate perfection of bhakti. So this kind of a conversation goes on uh, between uh, 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 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai. And it is very important uh, as Gaudiya Vaishnavas for us to actually understand the important uh, uh, purpose from these uh, uh, kind of conversations. Again, we see that later after this uh, conversation is done, uh, Ra uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spends more evenings with uh, Sri Ramananda Rai and asks him so many other questions, you know, like what should be done in Krishna consciousness and things like that. So after um, all this happens, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that it's time for you to come over with me, you know, to Jagannath Puri like that. So uh, Ramananda Rai, he requests some time and permission from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, he says that I need to get rid of my, you know, other material responsibilities and other things, and then I will join you soon. So then um, he actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, talks to the king and gets rid of his... Uh, 
you know, uh, these uh, material duties and goes and lives there in Puri. Actually, he 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 wants to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in uh, in person there. So that's how he later on moves to Puri and he serves uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there. So from this, we understand that uh, Sri uh, Ramananda Rai, he was not any ordinary person because the Lord uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, uh, you know, is striking a conversation with Ramananda Ra Rai, uh, taking the position, you know, when, Ra when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approaches Ramananda Rai, he says that I am a Mayavad sannyas, so I don't even know anything about it. So can you please teach the science of bhakti to me. So that's the uh, humble position uh, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes in front of Sri Ramananda Rai. And uh, Ramananda Rai very well knows that you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, you know, during the course of this conversation, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes into ecstasy and shows his transcendental uh, um, form, you know, the Mahabhav Rasa uh, form, which is, you know, where we see the picture of Radha Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the middle. So he shows his form that he is a combination or he is none other than uh, Sri Krishna and Radha combined. So he gives darshan of this special form to Ramananda Raya and also tells him that do not disclose any of these confidential, you know, my form um, or my, uh, what my real uh, nature is to anybody, you know, I don't want anybody to know. So he, such confidential dealings he has with uh, Ramananda Rai and uh, so Ramananda Rai again agrees that he will not disclose these uh, confidential, you know, dealings with other than the close associates of the Lord. So, so uh, that's how exalted a personality uh, Ramananda Rai is. And also from the purports and the translations we read today, we see that, you know, because he, some uh, uh, books or some, uh, you know, acharyas, they describe him as Lalita Sakhi and some as Vishakha Sakhi. So when he was actually training the young girls for the Jagannatha Nataka, he took that position, you know, of a gopi, and he was trying to assess because like how, you know, in these days, in modern times, when we want to understand this, we see that, um, you know, many actors who want to play a role in a movie, um, you know, they try to get into the character. I mean, they call it character acting or something like that. So what they do is they go and spend some time, like supposing somebody is trying to, uh, you know, play the role of Prime Minister Modi or something like that, Indian Prime Minister Modi. So then they would go and spend time there in his village and, you know, spend some time with him observing his mannerisms, trying to see what he does, how he walks, how he talks, you know, how he conducts himself and what his life is like, you know, go spend some time in his village, talk to his family and see like, you know, how, what kind of a person he was and things like that, you know, trying to get into the character like that. So uh, Sri Ramananda Rai, he was, um, uh, you know, he was a very great poet too, a great poet and a devotee. And like you see, he could write such great dramas. So, so he actually, when he was training those girls, he got into, uh, you know, he was in his um, original spiritual form of a Sakhi. And he was actually helping these girls to get the right mood to present the drama. So, you know, like I was giving the example of how actors do such things, you know, to get into the character, they try to spend time. So this was Ramananda Rai himself, when he, you know, was um, uh, training these girls, he actually was doing all this in his spiritual body, in his Siddha Deha, not in his material body, because uh, his consciousness was at that level. And we can see that it, it is very encouraging to us to see that, like how Prabhupada mentions, that uh, even in, um, you know, in this material world, if one reaches the pinnacle of bhakti, if one is very sincere and uh, takes to bhakti ser seriously, then one can experience these transcendental emotions even in this material world. So we see such uh, evidences all through the Chaitanya Charitamrita 
uh, where you know the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, though outwardly, you know, even Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you see a couple of chapters earlier too, we see uh, so many examples are given. Like we saw earlier, the Chota Hari Das, he was chastised heavily for uh, you know looking at uh, a woman. And then uh, we see the Damodar Pandit was advising Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to not associate closely with a young boy because his mother was beautiful. So again, you know, this is giving us an idea of how we have to conduct ourselves in a Varnashrama society because we need to form, we need to follow the rules and regulations. Otherwise, uh, you know, it could create chaos. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by his own example is giving uh, uh, us these instructions, these lessons. And then later on, we saw that uh, how Haridas Thakur, such a great devotee of the Lord, though, you know, uh, the prostitute was right there for so many days. And then Maya Devi herself came and tested him. In spite of all these things, he remained unfazed. And he was so fixed that he, in fact, converted the prostitute into a devotee. So we see different levels of, you know, uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, realizations or we see different levels of the uh, advanced devotees here where uh, you know in one so one situation we saw that Chota Haridas is actually condemned by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but on the other hand we see that uh, Sri Laharidas Thakur is totally you know unfazed he is like absolutely um, uh, oblivious to this prostitute sitting in his court in his uh, yard you know in his uh, and he's just chanting, 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 and the prostitute also becomes a great devotee of the Lord. So again, we see in the case of Sanatana Goswami, who actually wanted to give up his life, you know, thinking himself to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, in the material body because of all those um, skin conditions he had. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him and again gave this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, instruction to us again that, you know, though uh, that his body is not material, it's totally transcendental because it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, property. It's not uh, his prop. It's not Sanatana Goswami's property. So he, he clearly says that this is my property and I want to use this in Krishna's service. So, so many nice lessons. We see that how we, we should not, uh, you know, take all these uh, lessons in a in the materialistic way or you know uh, looking at the bodily uh, 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 looking from a bodily consciousness but we need to move beyond this and look at it in a spiritual consciousness and uh, try to utilize this body this mind and everything in krishna's service so uh, now we see this uh, um, example where a pradyumna mishra this pradyumna mishra is actually um, considered a Satya Vesh Avatar of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And uh, Pradyumna Mishra is again prodded by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You see, the first time he meets uh, Ramananda Rai, he is a little kind of bewildered by seeing what is happening there, you know, like how Ramananda Rai is training the girls. So he doesn't say a word and he comes back to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understands that, you know, Pradyumna Mishra has not gotten the full purport of what's happening. So then he explains to Pradyumna Mishra all these details that, you know, Ramananda Rai is not an ordinary personality and he is not, when he is training these girls, he is actually situated in his, you know, in his original position as a gopi. And that's how he's doing it because he, he definitely couldn't do it if he were thinking on a, on a material platform. So that's when uh, he advises Pradyumna Mishra to go back again and take lessons from Sri uh, uh, Ramananda Rai. So after this, we'll see that uh, uh, Pradyumna Mishra, he actually goes back to Ramananda Rai and Ramananda Rai asks him, what are the topics that you would like to listen from me? And Pradyumna Mishra says, the, I would like to uh, hear more about the discussions you had in Vidyanagara. So these discussions are none other than the than the Ramananda uh, Samvad. We we just you know went over briefly. So that is the discussion he is very interested in because he wants to know what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai actually discussed on the banks of Godavari. 
So he asks about these uh, details and Sri Ramananda Rai explains to him all these different truths. And, you know, then he gets to understand what a great, uh, uh, you know, personality uh, uh, Ramananda Rai is. So um, I think I will just stop here. I mean, this is a short class and uh, yeah, I would like to hear from others if they have any realizations, comments or questions. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Um, very, very nice class, Mataji. Very simple and nice. Thank you so much. No questions, Mataji. It was a nice uh, presentation on this matter. Very good. Hi, Krishna Mataji. <clears throat> um, I have a, a, a little confusion about Ramananda Roy's identity because there is one specific verse or two, but I know for sure one, where he says, where Srila Prabhupada says that Ramananda Roy is Vishaka. But I know that there is something else that you were mentioning in class, that there is some kind of confusion about whether he's Vishaka or Lalita. So I know both things are there in the CC. So I'm just wondering why there is that confusion about his identity. Yeah, I, I too am wondering on those lines, Mataji. And I think the Acharyas uh, have penned down their realizations. And from what uh, little I read, I saw that, you know, when Bhakti Vinoda Thakura, um, he, I think, he uh, says that he, he was, um, he was Lalita Sakhi, right? Bhakti Vinoda Thakura. Um, I don't know. I, I know there's a purport. I think it's the other um, around there. Huh? I thought it was the other way around. Bhaktivinoda Thakur calls him Vishaka and um, Gargonadish Deepika calls him Lalita, if I'm not wrong. You can check. Gargonadish Deepika. Um, yeah, one him. of the two. Yeah. Let me try to. But, you know, the thing is, I'm wondering why, since there is this confusion, why yeah. should a poor yeah, like says, the, for, you know, is he says okay. it in a, written, in a definitive way. He says that Ramananda Roy is Vishaka. So if there is this confusion, why does he say it so definitively? You know, I was trying to look up the reference because I just looked this up a couple of weeks ago. So I could actually give you the verse where he says that, but Yeah, I, I have it here, but it is two way twenty three. Okay, great. It's two way twenty three where Srila Bhaktivana Thakur he says the same love which Vishaka had for Radha and Krishna and Raja and that love which Radha and Krishna had for Vishakha awakened in them when they met. Thus it is clear that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw Ramananda Rai as Vishakha. And also there, uh, you know, um, this is, I'm here wait. reading from Gaudiya History, is Condesitary. And there's wait, also wait, online- Wait, wait, wait. One yeah. I couldn't get the verse number that you were citing just now. 2823. This is Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Yeah, Bhakti Vinoda Thakur's commentary on Chaitanya Chaitamrita 2A23. Um, the eighth uh, chapter, Madhya Leela. Wait a minute. Because you said 2A23. Mm -hmm. Two means Madhya Leela. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know th there's a verse, but that, that wasn't a verse I don't think I was thinking about. My computer oh. isn't working properly, so I can't pull it up. Yeah, in this easy. purport, it is written clearly. If anybody can share Madhilila 823, uh, you can read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, also, you know, like this is from the Gaudiya Vaishnava uh, biographies of Acharyas. Um, and uh, associates, and in this also, I, w I just wanted to bring this to attention, like Preeti said, the Gaur Ganesh, as stated in the verses from Gaur Ganodesha Deepika, some people hold that Ramananda Raya, oh. 
Ramananda Raya was an incarnation of Lalita. Some others are of the opinion that he was Vishakha. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, Mataji, on the whole, my understanding is that he was um, one of the gopis and also, you know, uh, uh, there's another uh, um, identity also alluded to him, which is Arjunia. Uh, you know, Arjuna became the gopi Arjunia. This is again mentioned in Gaur Ganesh, Gano Desha Deepika 120-124. So a lot of personalities are being mentioned, Mataji. So I'm thinking uh, ultimately we have to understand that he was one of the gopis. So that's how. Yeah. How do you spell Arjunia? A-R-J-U-N-I-A. Okay, that's what I thought. N-I-Y-A, sorry. Oh, N-I-Y-A. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was one of... Arjuna became... He was Arjuna. The... That's what they say. He yeah. is like, uh -huh. you know, Arjuna. And uh, his mm -hmm. other four brothers were the other four Pandavas. And like, yeah. Bhavananda Raya was Pandu himself. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu too. Oh, Ram, Ram, Ramananda Roy was, or the father of Ramananda Roy was Pandu. Bhavananda Raya, he was the father oh. of Ramananda Raya. And uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says in the Chaitanya Chantamrita that he is none other than Pandu himself. Pandu, the father of the Pandavas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, oh yeah, I just found my reference. Yes, it was the same one that you read. 823. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one other thing about Ramananda Roy, you said that the reason why, you know, he was able to deal with the, the female dancers so intimately was because he was doing it in his, in his spiritual body, right? Yeah. As, as, as um, Vishaka or Lalita, whatever, right? Is that correct? Yes, Mataji, that's what Srila Prabhupada says in the purports. So when we say, because, you know, Ramananda Roy, he is male. So when we say that he was doing it in his spiritual body, does that mean that he was doing it in the consciousness of, of Vishaka or Lalita? Does, is that what that means? Yes, Mataji, uh, I, would, I, I would understand it that way. And not only that, Mataji, um, these uh, exalted personalities, uh, you know, when they go into a trance, they enter into their spiritual bodies too. Um, you know, they kind of, you know, they may lay unconscious or, you know, they may not show external, uh, you know, like, uh, 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 you know, manifestation, like how ordinary material bodies show, but they may be in a trance and they may be actually ex expressing the uh, I mean, experiencing the uh, transcendental, uh, uh, you know, they may be in their transcendental body, though outside, you know, externally, the material body will be there like that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like what I was saying, right, that, you know, although their apparent, apparent material body mm -hmm. is there, like Ramanan Roy's body was apparently male, mm -hmm. but internally he was behaving as gopi yes mataji. vishaka lalita right yes mataji you you were saying that so he, he was it in the consciousness or was it in a spiritual body right so what i no 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 I, no, no, no. I, I know i was saying when you say spiritual body you know since we are seeing Ramananda Roy as a male, right, in this Gorlila, mm -hmm. we're seeing him as a male. So to say that he was dealing with the female dancers in that way, in, 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 spiritual, um, in, spiritual, in his spiritual body, to me that means that it had to be spiritual consciousness because his spiritual body is female. And, you know, to us, it seems like he's male. So for him to operate in his spiritual body, it seems like that must only mean that in his, con in his consciousness, he was operating as 
gopi. But even though externally, you know, he was looking like Ramananda Roy, Roy, male, you know, apparently, you know, material body. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that understanding is correct. That's what I'm trying to confirm. Yes, Mataji. Um, uh, from what I've heard about spiritual body versus material body, Mataji, um, when a person uh, goes into like this pure, pure state, you know, of bhakti, mm-hmm. then uh, mm-hmm. this, you know, he shares his material body and the spiritual body is there, but it is in minute, you know, because uh, how do you experience this rasa and all unless you have those spiritual senses and the spiritual mind and intelligence, right? So it is very yeah. minute because it's been covered by these material coverings. But then, mm-hmm. you know, when you understand and your relationship with uh, Krishna and uh, do bhakti, this spiritual body expands. Like, you know, you actually, it comes out to the fore. And uh, um, so externally, even though, you know, Ramananda Rai had this material body covering him, but maybe because he's a perfected soul already, his spiritual body was also there, Mataji. That's how, you know, like they can quickly change between these bodies. It's not, a, you know, like a, uh, um, externally, though, everybody was able to see his male body, but... Uh, inside his spiritual uh, consciousness, his spiritual body was what was doing those things because he absolutely, you know, uh, uh, if he were massaging with a material body, it would have been different. That's what I try. That's what I understand, Mataji. But definitely but, all Matajis can comment who are is more informed. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is that, you know, we're talking about Raman and the Roy. So, you know, his body was spiritual, even before he was dealing with these dancers, I would assume, mm-hmm. you know, he he's all, he's a nitya siddha. Mm-hmm. So his, you know, his his body would have all, always been spiritual, you know, even though he's in an apparently male material body, you know. True, Matisse. Like we have also yeah. heard heard of, you know, Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, though out externally we saw that he had some sickness or, you know, he was taking some Ayurvedic treatment like that, but uh, there were many moments when he, you know, when devotees have seen him actually, uh, you know, go into his spiritual trance, but he tried to hide all those. So it, I, I think it's totally possible for these great uh, exalted souls you know, to switch between bodies easily like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah see, like my confusion, Mataji, is that these, um, when we're talking about these Nitya Siddha personalities, to say that, you know, only at this, only during this time they, they, they were using spiritual body is a, is a confusion for me because they're always fully spiritual even though they appear to have material bodies. So to say that, you know, it was only during this leader, for example, that he had spiritual body, then that throws into question, well, what was his body before this leader where he was, you know, training these dancers? He's a Nitya Siddha, so, you know, his his body had to have been spiritual before he was training these gopis also, I would think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, you know, just to, 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 to say that, you know, he was doing it in spiritual body only during that particular pastime is a bit confusing for me, you know. Yes, Vatiji, uh, I think you're right in that, that because these are Niti Siddhas, um, but all of a sudden, then you know, when they appear on uh, this uh, material in this material platform, they uh, uh, you know they uh, like how even Lord Krishna when he was on uh, uh, you know his pastimes on uh, the material world, though he is totally transcendental, he exhibits these kind of material tendencies. You know, like being afraid of his mom, crying, you know, all those things we see that. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he never it, it, does those things with material body. So yeah, yeah. I'm, totally so similarly, you know, I, I'm saying 
for this too, for this Raman on the Roy, although he may appear to have material body, I'm suggesting that, you know, he never has material body because he's Nitya Siddha. Yeah, so at, at his consciousness level, he would never think he has a material body. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, though anyway. <laughs> externally we see the body is deteriorating and you know so many things like that but like you rightly said mm -hmm. yeah, they are performing at a spiritual level i would like to think that way too not to okay thank you so much Mataji. yeah i'm not sure i answered what you were looking for but i can only really share what i know so. mm -hmm. thank you thank you Mata. Any other Matajis want to comment on this? On Gaurangi Mataji's questions? Yeah, uh, Mataji, uh, not exactly on Gaurangi Mataji's question. Yes, uh, I think I understand what both of you are saying. So basically when um, your consciousness is so absorbed, like sometimes even Prabhupada, when he was very, very absorbed, like sometimes while singing Jai Radha Madhava or something, there was a moment of trance that he did um, Though his body is completely spiritual, there are some moments which he exhibits, like you were also talking. So, like that, um, when because this while dressing the girls, Ramananda Rai's consciousness was so absorbed in thoughts of Krishna and the gopis, um, that because he was preparing for that Nataka, uh, you know, the, the entire show uh, that is going to be revolving around uh, Krishna and the gopis. So, therefore, he, he did uh, uh, meditate a lot on that. Like sometimes when we are doing intense hearing or chanting, we do have these moments where we are really lost, meaning not lost, but spiritually absorbed. Mm -hmm. So we can think of it as something like that is what I wanted to say. I mean, I know both of you said the same thing, but I just wanted to add it in different words. And uh, that, I don't know if that helped, Mataji. The other thing is, I just wanted you to comment a little bit about Jagannath Vallabhanataka as specifically, uh, you know, some more on it, and also in relation to what the Malkrishna Maharaj wrote. Can you please say a few words? I'm not sure I looked that up, Mataji. Do you have any uh, online? Um, I mean, are you able to look up something online and we can read that now, Mata? Let me see, and I'm not saying much. So yeah, I, I really didn't uh, go, go into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure I have that book at home somewhere, but mm -hmm. I have to look for it now. Mm. It'll be nice to read and see what. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It would be nice to kind of glimpse through that uh, book and see what exactly it is about. So. You able to catch something? No, <laughs> but I know it's on, I mean, the, it's there on his website, um, you know, but I've never gone through it completely. So I just thought of asking you. The drama of Lord Jagannath. Yeah, there is some Sanskrit PDF I saw, but it's a 32 page long. No matter she had not able to find it. Yeah, I do. I mean, I see a link to his drama, but there is no PDF for something. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Preeti. Yeah, sorry, I didn't read up enough on that. Oh, no worries. Oh, I think there is one on the other. You want to read, Mataji? Yeah, one second. Let me see.
is RTF, but I don't see any links there. Uh -uh. This is an MP3 though. Mataji, it's an MP3 and it's an English drama, so I really didn't go through the entire section, so that's why I asked. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah I'm sure the book is there somewhere at home, but I don't know where. I have to ask my Prabhuji. <laughs> where the book is. That's okay, Mataji. That's our homework. We'll do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Yeah, even I'll take the opportunity to read that now. So anyone else has any questions, comments, or realizations you want to ask or share with Mataji? Okay, Mataji, thank you so much. Thank, thank you again you. for your very valuable association and very nice class. Thank you for coming on the call. We can end here if there are no other questions. Vancha kalpata rube shya krupa sindhu ge vacha patita nam pahuni be vaishna ve bhyo namo namaha nanta koti vaishna vrindh ki jai. Shula prabhu pad ki jai. Shri Chaitanya Sharitam rat ki jai. Harve suksagri Mataji ki jai. Hari. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji.